the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. Christ is in our midst. I'd like to welcome everybody this morning on this beautiful third Sunday of Luke. It's a very short gospel reading, but it's very powerful. And sometimes bad things happen in our lives and we wonder why us? And in the gospel today, something happened bad to a mother. We all love our mothers very much and we would never like them to be sad. In fact, today uh, is the eight year anniversary of my own mother's passing and the 40 day for my mother-in-law. So Presbyteta is in, is in Pittsburgh for the service there. And both of their names were Eleni. We also remember Anton, who was the father of our caretaker, Anna Georgi, and we'll be having a memorial here shortly. But in the Gospel today, chapter 7 of Luke, we don't know the name of the mother. We only know that there was a funeral that was taking place. And it is true that sometimes people that we love pass and they go to be with the Lord. It says that as Jesus went to a city called Nain and his disciples and a great crowd was with him and the crowd was with Jesus because already they were aware of the many, many miracles that he was performing. And so they wanted to see what he would do next and could he do a miracle even greater than the other fabulous miracles? He had already turned water into wine. He had already healed the paralytic. He had already blessed the fishermen so that they caught so many fish that their nets were breaking. He had performed many miracles. And now on this day, he approaches the funeral and all eyes were on him to see what would he do next. It says, that as he drew near to the gate of a city, behold, a man who had died was being carried out. In those days, they would have the body of the person who had passed on a, think of it like on a stretcher, carried by their loved ones, so all could pay their last viewing of that loved one. And he was being carried out. And it says he was the only son of his mother. And there was a very large crowd from the city with her. For the crowd to have been so large, she must have been a very important and influential person in the city. She must have been loved by many, many, many people. And they were sad to see that she was sad. So they went with her as they were carrying her son out. But when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And he said to her, do not weep. Now we're going to pause for a minute before we go to what happens next. And we're going to ask ourselves, why do bad things happen to good people? We just heard some very tragic news. Every day we hear tragic news. And maybe I should speak more to the adults. Maybe it's too much for the children to bear. That, that so many bad things we're seeing in the press. And we could be wondering, when will it stop? Or why? Or what is the revelation? What's the purpose of that suffering? The Lord had answered this question after one of his miracles by, by saying it's so that the glory of God can be revealed. In other words, something about the nature of God, about the beauty of God, about the authority of God, that God reigns on his throne and that he is in control. Something about his nature is waiting to be revealed. And such is that in the story today. But this week, there was something in the news that was absolutely mind-blowing. We saw the story, the tragic story, I believe it was in Dallas, Texas, of a woman police officer and she went into the home. She went into the home. Apparently, she entered the wrong home. Maybe she had a long shift. Who knows exactly 
what was going through her mind, but she entered the home next to hers and she saw a man. She saw a black man, a man of a different color than her own. And she became scared, this is her explanation anyway, and she took her gun and she killed him. Terrible! And of course, she was arrested and she went on trial. And this week, they showed the courtroom and they showed that she was in the courtroom on trial and that the family members of the man who was killed were also there. And they allowed the brother of the man who was killed to go on the witness stand. And this is what he said. I'll paraphrase it. It gives me chills just to think about it. He said, you killed my brother, but I want you to know that I forgive you, that we forgive you, our family forgives you, and that we ask only one thing, that you will completely commit yourself to Jesus Christ, and that you will live your life for Jesus Christ. And then the brother did something even more extraordinary. He turned to the judge and said, would you allow me to hug her? And he granted the permission. And he left the witness stand and went and embraced the woman who had killed his brother. The glory of God revealed through the response and the actions of the brother who was, of course, very sad to lose his brother. Of course, deeply wounded. Of course, he wasn't happy that it happened. But he knew that no matter what he would do, he could not bring his brother back. The only thing he could do is turn it for the good in some way. And he's had to search his soul quite a bit. But glory to God that he made the right decision. We might say that another aspect of the glory of God is revealed in the gospel today when we see now what is about to happen. What do you think the miracle will be? The son is brought out. He has died. And his mother is there weeping with a great crowd. What do you think, Sophia? I saw you raise your hand. You think he's going to make him alive. Any of the other youth or children? Anyone believe that? You do? Anyone else? Why do you say that? Why do you think that he's going to do that? You, you, you do agree or you don't? You don't agree. Fair enough. Victoria, what do you think? What do you think the Lord is going to do? That's a sweet thought. She said that Jesus will somehow make the mother feel better and maybe bring the boy back to life. Well, let's see what it says in the story. It says that he said to her, do not weep. So you're right. He, he wanted to make her feel better. And he came and he touched the bier and the bearers, the pallbearers, the ones who were carrying him, they stood still. And he said the following words. I want you to repeat them after me. Young man, all together, young man, I say to you, arise. And this is what happened. The dead man sat up and he began to speak. Now, in those days, the Jews, they were trying to have the funerals always within 24 hours, but that's still a long time. We know that a person who goes without oxygen for even four minutes, their brain will be in very bad shape. And he was dead for much longer than that. And the dead man sat up and the boy began to speak. And he gave him to his mother. And everybody there, it says, fear sees them. Because which of us sees something like that? Who has seen something like that? Although we had a very interesting miracle in our own community, 
that a lady was raised back to life who was pronounced brain dead. Remember? Remember that story? Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. We might ask ourselves, why did he have to die in the first place? Maybe we would, if we were being honest with ourselves, we would have to answer that maybe everything that comes into being will die eventually, whether it's our dog or maybe we have a horse or maybe a, a very good friend or our parents or grandparents. All of us will die eventually, every living thing, even plants. And yet, by raising the boy, how do you think the rest of the people felt? Remember, some of the Jews believed in the general resurrection of the dead, and some did not. So, though, so those who believed in the general resurrection of the dead, do you think they believed more now or less after they saw that miracle? More? You say more? Raise your hand if you say more. Raise your hand if you say less. Okay, so most are saying more. I think it is that they, they were believing more because now they saw that it's possible for somebody to be raised from the dead. So the Lord is saying to us, even if bad things happen in the current order of this life, there will come a day, there will come a day that I will raise everyone back to life. And on that, on that day, everyone will be overjoyed, just as the mother in the story was overjoyed. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, the great physician of our souls and bodies, as we are about to receive your divine <coughs> body and blood, which is life-giving for the forgiveness of sins and life eternal. We understand that the seed of resurrection is planted in us at our baptism when we receive the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands and by being buried with you in the hope of the resurrection, three days going under the water, three days. We now give thanks for the story, this gospel story, for the young man that you raised from the dead. And we pray that you will raise us on the last day at your holy second coming so that we may live forever and ever in joy with our mother, with our father, with our friends, our sisters, our brothers, the members of our church, and all whom we love. Bless, Lord, we pray, our lives, so that we may live for you as your disciples. We ask this in your name, for your holy and blessed, to ages of ages. Amen.